2,494 on the number one podcast in Apple Podcast Job Search. You're listening to or watching an OBS Job Search Advice Radio. I'm your host, Jeff Off the Big Game Hunter, and welcome. Today's show is an interview I did with Kevin D. Turner about creating and building a digital brand for yourself. Now, before you hear the term digital brand, Think in terms of reputation for yourself, how people will get to know, like, trust, find you online so that opportunities come to you and you don't always have to chase them. Hope you find this helpful. Please give this show a great review wherever you listen to or watch it. Share it. Leave a comment. Click the like button. Do something that contributes to the success of the show. I'm not asking for money, you know. It doesn't take much to click the like button or to share it on LinkedIn. And now we'll be back in just one moment. So my guest today is Kevin D. Turner. Kevin is someone who, you know, he's he's lived what he's going to talk about. And that is he's someone who's done a a pivot multiple times and in doing so built a brand for himself that it's allowed him to be successful during five evolutions in his career transitioning from fortune 50 big company sales and marketing management to venture capital to public and private turnarounds leading a nonprofit. Uh, a nonprofit 50 internationally, and finally proving it to himself by turning a side gig into a 10 year successful business. Kevin, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for making time today. <laughs> Jeff, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here and I like your energy. So where do we go from here? I think we have a pretty good idea of that. And folks, just so you're in on the secret, we're going to be talking about building a digital brand in order to maximize your exposure, the audience. You can lock down a good part of your career and be much more effective, much more easily. So maybe I could just start by asking you, Kevin, why does everyone hate the idea of personal branding? <laughs> and everybody does. And it's because we don't, want to realize we are a product in this society, right? And if we can package ourselves so that others understand our value, then we're going to move farther forward, right? We're going to get to where we want to go. If we step back and allow others to brand us, we don't know where we're going to go. We have no control. And so I think that's why people get upset with it. They're not sure what it is. I've never had to do it before. You know, what is this? Why? And and why do I have to then take it out to the internet? They're, they're uncomfortable with it until they understand that it gives you control of where you go. And I don't know if I want control. Like, Big Mommy <laughs> Company has been telling me for the longest time, I've got this job title, and that's who I am, is my job title. Isn't that you good know, enough? You, you can ask many people, and there's always a point in their life where that same company that told them everything to do then told them to go home. And if it didn't happen to them, it happened to many people. And the time you don't want to begin the process of – figuring out that brand, getting it out there, getting known for something is not when you're unemployed, right? You want to do this. You want to brand to kind of land your opportunities, whether you're employed or not employed, but you don't want to have to try to ramp it all up at that point. And I think that's one of the big surprises that people realize is if I do this and I continue to do it, then I may not ever get into that position again. I'll always be in demand. And, and I think that's a big piece of it. And how did you start thinking about it in your life? What made you start to think about developing that personal brand that allowed you to do these different transitions? Well, I was always in branding and marketing and sales, right? And to me, they're they're all integrated. They're, they all support each other. And the concepts are, are very similar in how do you get all this stuff done. Now, I was with uh, Sony Corporation and uh, went off into a joint venture with Sony Qualcomm. And one day they put 600 of us on a phone call and they said, um, by the way, uh, there's a FedEx envelope heading to you, put your car keys in there, put your laptop in there and it's goodbye. 
And there'll be a letter in there from HR if you get any transition stuff. So right on the phone, 600 of us, a whole division, closed doors, and we were sent on. No warning, you know. And I looked at that, and at that point, I said, I don't want to do what I did. Because Sony actually invited me back to come back into the general audio area, and I was in cell at that time. And I said, I want to do something different. And so I knew to be able to kind of make the change I wanted to make, I had to package myself just like I packaged products, just like I sold things, you know, for a Fortune 50 company. I had to then look at, you know, what do I bring to the table? And what I wanted to do was start a company through venture capital. So I packaged myself as somebody who could do that, somebody who could understand really how to bring things to market. And that was what I did in that process. Now, that was before, you know, LinkedIn and and all the other kind of social platforms that are out there. You did a little more manually, right? You had to have- Were were there dinosaurs out there too? Yeah, they they were. (laughs) That was one of my business models. (laughs) Training dinosaurs. No, but it really, you know, it came to kind of I guess that that stage where I really realized that I am the product, I've got to package and sell myself. And so how do you do that? And, and you know, a lot of it goes back to looking at, you know, not just what you've done, because sometimes what you've done isn't what you want to be known for, right? And that's that's a problem that people have. And, and I always call it kind of a, what, what I call personal blanding. And that's when people throw everything they've ever done into it, right? And they say, this is me. These are all the things I've done. But that doesn't get you farther forward. That's not branding. That's blanding in the sense that you're putting things out there you don't ever want to do again. I look at in in the past, um, I used to be really, really good at doing um, payroll and taxes. If you do payroll and taxes right, and this was before software, Nobody says thank you because you paid them, right? (laughs) They did the job, you paid them. They're not going to say thank you. You get it wrong one time and they're knocking on your door at 11 o'clock on Friday night saying, my paycheck was short. We got to go back to the office. You've just spent 80 hours at the office. You're not going back. I had to give them cash. So you will never see as part of my brand, the fact that I can do taxes and accounting and payroll. That'll never be part of my branding. And if you go into my LinkedIn profile, it's not there. You can't find it because I've decided to create what I want to move forward with my brand. And that's really critical. You don't make it up. You refine it and you focus it to help you get where you need to go. And I always think in terms of, number one, who knows about you mm-hmm. and what do you want to be known for? Absolutely. And what are they paying for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's some things we're known for that they're not going to pay for, (laughs) you know. And It's so true. And thank you for adding that in because you're absolutely right. And folks, as you think about your branding, you know, if you're only known by the people on the fourth floor in the office building you work at, that's a pretty small universe, no matter how large that floor is. There's a world out there that social media can bring you to, LinkedIn can bring you to, that allows far more people to know about you and get the, a sense of how you think so that they get to trust you and think of you in this way. And you can invent yourself online as long as you can back it up. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it, for people who are afraid of the word networking, right? Right. And I always tell people, uh, uh, you know, networking always beats not working. It isn't easy, right? It's tough. But the beauty of digital networking is it's a lot easier. You're kind of hiding behind a computer screen to a degree. You can reach more people. You can involve more people. You can build relationships faster digitally than sometimes you can in the real world. So if you show up to a meeting. But what's interesting is the principles are the same. You don't show up to a networking meeting and go around and say, you know, I can solve your insurance problems, right? Because nobody's going to talk to you. (laughs) You know, you go in there and you've got to be personable. You've got to uh, help them kind of know, like, and trust. That's that Bob Berg uh, go-giver statement, right? You've got to get them there. And so 
a lot of that involves your personality, not so much your personal information, but your personality. And you got to get in there and you got to win them over. And that's how networking is done. And that's why people always go into networking in the wrong way. And digital networking is the same. You want to get out there. You want to be known for something. You want to help people. You want to provide value. And then you want to take that same digital relationship and you want to bring it into the real world. Because if you don't take that extra step, it just kind of fades away. It just becomes digital, becomes another number, right? So you do want to bring it into that real world. But the same things that we do outside work inside digital. And the same thing with what doesn't work, right? If you went into that meeting and you passed your card out to every single person in that meeting and then walked out, they probably wouldn't call you. It's the same thing of sending spam emails, right? Or DMing people all the time or chasing them around uh, LinkedIn and leaving, you know, hey, why don't you call me uh, messages for them? Doesn't work either. So that's one thing you get, you know, if you get to understand that, you'll go far in the process. Ultimately, you know, we were talking about no like trust and I always add the ter- the other word respect in, uh, mm-hmm. into the equation because I think... It, you know, people get to know, like, and trust a lot of people. And the respect is what makes it, I think, from a professional standpoint, that much more valuable, where you can start charging a premium rate, because they think they're getting best in class. Uh, And for folks, you know, I talk in terms of world class work, and world class performers. And that's how I try and coach people is to be world class. This way, you cut the line and get to the front wherever you can and that's really what we're talking about is cutting the line to get to the front of of everyone's thought process so when they're thinking about coaching career coaching branding you're thinking of specific people like hi or (laughs) or in kevin's case himself Uh, so how do we create, help someone create a brand or how does someone start thinking of themselves from the branding standpoint and constructing that brand once they, we've gotten past that defense of, I'm not like toilet paper or detergent. Yep. Yep. And okay, I, I, I can think of doing this. Like how do they actually start this process of thinking of themselves that way? How do they construct the brand? You know, I think the, the the first step is you really have to kind of self-assess, right? What are you good at, you know, that you want to continue to do? So what are those things? Try to get it down to three or four things, right? And you also want to measure that against, as we said earlier, what are, what are organizations or people, what are they paying for, right? So those things have to really kind of line up. And that's where you start to kind of get the focus of what that brand is moving forward. And from there, you you want to incorporate it into your presentation. So you want to kind of come up with a statement. That's where you start. People Sometimes people call it an elevator pitch. Uh, it's a perfect thing to put into your headline on LinkedIn, right? It's really telling them very quickly, what do you bring to the table? What's your value, right? Personalize it. Make sure it has your flavor right? Not somebody else's. Don't make it so generic. And I think we've we've talked about this before. Uh, you know, generics and being generic, uh, that might sell, right? If you're a commodity, if you don't want to be paid very well, if you don't want to be treated very well, go generic, right? Because that's how the value they're going to see you. So, so take it out of that generic, make it personal, uh, make it strong, and really kind of build that statement in. And then, you know, it's not always words, right? Let's say if you wanted to be known as a, as a, a team player and you write team player everywhere and everybody else does, right? You've seen that in resumes and bios and in LinkedIn things. Instead of saying that, show me some pictures of you taking your team through the ropes course, right? Or show me pictures of you uh, giving awards to your team members, right? Show that. So the visual component of this is really important as well. It's interesting because we're now far more visual than we used to be. It used to be a lot of text, you know, mm-hmm. and people would do the white papers and the white papers were all lots of text with a little yep. bit of graphic in there. And um, now everything is so much more visually oriented. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to be proactive here and say, 
but I don't like having my picture taken. <laughs> and I don't like doing video. Um, do I have to do this kind of stuff? You know, if if you if you want to be successful, yes. You know, perfect answer because that's my because thing. That's it, and that's what people want to know that you are successful by putting yourself out there, by bringing your image forward, and obviously being able to back it up with your proof metrics and everything else and the wording. But by doing that, you you stand out front because ninety five percent of the other people out there aren't doing it. But if you want to be in that top group and you want to move forward and you want to be the person they remember, right, then bring that in. If you only talk about the words or you only give some visuals without you in there, how are they going to remember you? And the brain, you know, most of us are visually wired. I think as they say, it's like 80% of us are visually wired how we accept information. And that's why graphics have come into play. Even Wikipedia used to be solid text. Right now it's got pictures all throughout it. We're that visually wired. That's how we pull things out of our memory. So if you can create that visual wire and part of your brand, you're going to be easier to remember. And you think about it, have you ever picked up an old picture and you haven't seen it in years or maybe you never saw it at all? And all of a sudden, all these memories come back, memories you didn't even know you had. And it was all in that visual. So, you know, make sure that you are incorporating it. And that's why it's important to get into those visuals, you know. None of us are really comfortable with it. And I think the ones that are, I worry about those people, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but we need to do it. We need to appear as people because otherwise we're just digits in a digital pattern, right? We don't want that. We want to kind of break out of that, become that person, become memorable, you know, in that process. So I think it, it is important to do. And again, the goal is cut the line to get to the front. If you, you want to be with all the other people standing online, standing there quietly waiting for the movie theater to open up, you can do that. <laughs> but if you want to be the person who they lift the ropes up for and allows to walk into the nightclub at the very beginning, you know, this, these are among the things yeah. that really serve you. Um, there's, there's a metaphor uh, the third door. There's a front door to the nightclub, there's a back door, and then there's the third door. Uh, and we're looking for the third door time and again that allows you the premium place of entry, uh, that allows you to be very effective and create an image for yourself that allows you to be advantaged all the time. Fantastic. I love that. That Just the image of the third door, right? I can see it. So it makes sense. Uh, afterwards, we'll talk about Steven Spielberg and his story of the third door uh, <laughs> and what he did. Uh, but, but folks, just to, uh, to be clear, we're talking about building a digital presence for yourself so that you're not bland. You are a visible expert at whatever it is that you do so that people will start thinking of you and when they're trying to hire someone or, you know, if you were a business owner, uh, build a business around you. And some of you are going to be doing side hustles um, yeah. as part of what you do to, to develop your branding. You know, this is the way to do it. So in building a digital presence for their brand, what sort of things, where, how, Tell us everything, Kevin. Uh, Come on. I was going to say, that my favorite place, and I think the place that you have the most control as an individual is LinkedIn. You've got your profile, right? Which to me is a sales brochure, right? You got pictures in there. You got words in there. It is part of the process of selling you, right? But it is just a brochure. If you left a brochure on a counter and hoped people would buy the product, wouldn't happen, Right. So that is your brochure. You got to perfect it. You got to have the right image, the right message. It's got to be strong, but then you've got to work the campaign, right? The ad campaign to get them in. And on LinkedIn, you've got a lot of different avenues as your ad campaign. You can, you know, read in your feed and comment, right? Add some added value to the discussion and build from there. You can go into audio rooms and get on stage and talk with people. You can actually do audio rooms, right? You can do newsletters on LinkedIn. You can do live sessions on LinkedIn. They're giving away 
what we would have to have paid for before, right? They're, they're basically giving you a, a radio station or a television station saying, here, use it. And so you definitely want to get in there, use it. But sometimes it starts with the basics, right? Get out there, start commenting, start showing up to live, start, start showing up to LinkedIn audios and start participating. Baby steps, right? And as you grow, you get into and then producing content. But all of that helps you build connectivity and kind of knowledge leadership. Are you going to be the top one in that category? Not at the beginning, but if you stick with it, you could be. The fun thing is, as long as you're not commenting like, great post. Yeah. <laughs> or just <laughs> no value. No value. Yeah, that's that's this... not a value add, you know. Right. But yeah. write a paragraph. You can write three sentences. That's what we're really talking about. Three, four sentences, a tag, you know, to go yeah. along with it that yeah. allows someone who's looking for that term to find it pretty easily. And you start getting noticed and yeah. stick in your lane. You know, if, you got if it. your you lane got is too broad, you know, it's like driving on a thousand lane road. Yeah. And yep. No one's going to find you on that road. And, that old uh, uh, Jack and Jill, right? Jack and Jill, uh, uh, master of none. So, you know, we don't want to be there. We don't want to be a jack of all trades, master of none, because nobody hires masters of none. Right? So true. They He's... want somebody who is focused. And anybody who has been in a transition, when they try to cast that broad net as their brand, they stay out there a long time. I'm talking not just months, sometimes years. Those who really focus in find their home very quickly. And it's interesting because they always think, well, because I'm so focused, I'm losing opportunity here. I'm losing opportunity over there. No, what you're actually doing is you're getting the opportunity that you're going to do the best in. So kind of focus towards that. Find out that focus and, and kind of laser in on it. And everything you should do on LinkedIn should have that in, in the back of your mind, right? Should be in part of that messaging. And in thinking of your messaging, I'll, I'll just do a quick anecdote. A friend of mine was a martial arts instructor, and he went to his sensei asking to learn a, a different um, martial art. Uh, and his sensei said, no, you stick with this. And he asked, why sensei? And he said, well, if you've seen a dog chase a rabbit. He can catch the rabbit. Dog chases two rabbits. How many rabbits does he catch? <laughs> and truthfully, that's what happens yeah. if your brand is too large. You know, yeah. It becomes too diffuse. Yeah. And your expertise doesn't show up in any one particular venue. So how, how do you position yourself? How do you get seen? We, we start off with, your profile mm -hmm. and you know positioning your profile in a way that allows you to appear like an expert and that's the brochure that you're leaving at the counter yeah, yeah. and we always think about it being keyword rich for what you want to be known for so mm -hmm. if someone's searching for you they can find you and then linkedin does a lot of things that allows you to connect your comments, your posts, your articles, your live streams, your videos, your podcasts to your profile yeah. in, in terms of content so that people are getting a bigger picture of you yeah. than just simply, hi, I'm a fill in the blank. I work for such and such company and contact me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it, it, one of the things that I, and this is kind of a secret uh, on LinkedIn, all this branding is great, but if they can't find you, they can't find you, right? One thing I tell everybody on LinkedIn is LinkedIn is, it's the world's largest database of resumes, 855 million strong now, right? How do you be the top choice when somebody goes out and searches on the internet, right? And they're looking for something, how often do they go past the first page, the second page, the third page, the 15th page? They don't, right? You usually find it the first, maybe the second. If you're really just, if you're a researcher, you go to the third page. LinkedIn is the same way. Now, the way to get on that first page on LinkedIn is to respect LinkedIn as a database. So 
when you're in LinkedIn and you're filling out things like titles, right? When you're in your experience section, you're filling out a title, type it slowly, watch for the drop down box, and it's going to give you the filters that are inside the database. So many years ago, I helped the, uh, uh, the head of HR transition for Yahoo, and he couldn't figure out nobody was finding him on LinkedIn. And, you know, part of our process was we got to get your market value title. His title, internet company, right, was Cloud9 Navigator. There's not a single recruiter out there looking for a Cloud9 Navigator, right? And so by changing that to Chief Human Resource Officer, he was scooped up within a month. And he'd been out for, you know, some time looking. And this was the kind of the factor. Now, even down to one of the biggest mistakes I see is that same problem in education. If, if an upper uh, education is required or even certificate certifications in certain areas are required for a job, if you didn't fill that out correctly, and what I mean by correctly, you type slowly, and if you see the drop-down box, you take one of the drop-down filters, you might put in their Bachelor of Arts, and LinkedIn won't recognize that because they see it as Bachelor of Arts dash BA. That's in the filter. Yours is not. You don't have an education. So respect LinkedIn as a database. All these other components are important, but we also have to get them to land when they're searching for us, right? And keywords, as you mentioned, are important. Um, one of the things I highly recommend people do as they're building out those brands is to figure out what those keywords are that move them forward. And LinkedIn has a great tool and uh, it's on their, uh, their GitHub. Uh, I'll tell you what the, um, it's LinkedIn.com github.io slash career dash explorer. Now, what's cool about that, and, you know, it's kind of LinkedIn's version of their um, Skunk Works, right? Uh, this, this group that does this. And what's really cool about it, though, is through that process, it pulls in your information from your profile. You type in a market that you're in. You type in the... Um, uh, title that you want to get to next or the one that you have. And it's going to tell you all the keywords based on the data within LinkedIn. So everybody else in that area that has your background, has those titles. These are the keywords they're using. And it's the ones that the recruiters are searching for when they're looking for you. And so if you can incorporate those into your skills area, your assigned skills and the content, right, of your profile, you're going to be more likely to get them to your brand so they can understand who you are. So most people don't realize that. And again, it goes back to kind of uh, respecting it as a database. So on titles, um, yes. unless it's in the dropdown, um, slash titles don't really work. Uh, because, That's right. You know, and by that, I mean, folks, programmer slash developer slash manager uh, yeah yeah slash cfo yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that worked actually about 10 years ago anything that went into that line was was almost like a keyword holder right and it was before linkedin started to put these filters in for basically 65 percent of its revenue stream comes from Recruiters. selling members to other members right from talent solutions and sales navigator was well, the only way you can make sense of 855 million files is to have some sort of order, right? And so part of this building our brand is we want to make sure we're using those filters that are helping us be found. It's just like if we built a brand on, on Google, right? We want to respect Google SEO. We got to do the same thing here. So that's one thing that I find fascinating about this is it's not manual like it was before, right? The, like the dinosaur training days, right? Now it is also affected by digital processing. So we got to get that component right of our brand. And keywords are, are really important. And that uh, GitHub uh, LinkedIn piece, huge information in there. Excellent. And I know because I used to do recruiting, they sell a product called LinkedIn Recruiter, mm -hmm. and it allows people to search using different fields. So it's the company field is one. Yeah. And, and thus, is it JP Morgan Chase? Is it JP, uh, JP Morgan? You know, 
is it JP Morgan Securities? You know, yep. pick the one that you're a part of and use their term for it. Um, they have ranges on years of experience. Mm -hmm. um, they have universities, degrees, yep. a whole host of different things. And of course, geography. Yep. Uh, then another, another one that they brought in recently is, do you follow the company? That's now coming up on uh, uh, Talent Recruiter. Do you follow the company? Do you have connections within the company? So if you're trying to build a brand and you want that company to respect you, follow the company and build connections within the company. Nobody ever checks and actually asks the connections, do you know Jeff? They just go, wow, Jeff knows 37 people in our company. He's going to fit in perfect. And right. how do you build those connections uh, other than, hi, I'm connected to, I'd like to connect with you. <laughs> how do you build them? I always say follow first, right? And join the conversation. When they post something, add that comment of value, right? When they comment, give them a reaction or say, hey, I, I see the same thing happening, Jeff, in my area and this, this, and this, right? Add value to what they're saying, and ultimately, you then can send them an invitation saying, hey, Jeff, you know, we've had a lot of conversations. I really like how you think. And, uh, you know, I'm interested in these things. Would you like to connect? That's a real connection request. It's personalized. It's based on history. We already have a little bit of trust going because of this communication we've been building. Perfect way to do it. Now, I have one little trick that, that I have been playing with lately, and it's really cool. If you go to a LinkedIn Live, right, or you go to an audio event, whether you get on stage or not, right, you go to the audio event, you can connect with anybody within that event. Now, one of the things I like to do is you go to this audio event, somebody comes on stage and they say something great, right? I always take a picture of the whole audio event with them on stage, the little green ring around them. I click on their picture and I send them their picture, just saying, you know, the last time I was on stage, I wish somebody had taken a picture, so I'm going to pass it forward. Here's your picture. Guess what? The first thing they do outside of thanking you, right? It becomes their next, yeah, it becomes their next day post. And they say, and thanks, Jeff, because you sent me the picture. You're, you've got a relationship. It's the such next an step easy is, thing. Yeah. So there's simple things like that just like they work in the real world. If somebody was up giving a speech in a room and you took a picture, you shot a little video off your iPhone, whatever it was, and you gave it to them, right? Giving is a is a kind of a good start. And so LinkedIn can be used the same way. You can build really quickly that way. There's a woman I knew many years ago who was one of the early commodities brokers at one of the houses on the street uh, when women were not we're first breaking into commodities trading. And she would, in the olden days, the dinosaur days, <laughs> send articles to people that she thought would be interesting to them. And we're talking about the modern equivalent of pictures, gifts, articles, what have you, comments that allow people to see you're extending yourself to them so that you get noticed. And I see people doing that with me now all the time. They're trying to sell me podcast hosting services or <laughs> or podcast promotion services. Because yeah. you know, between my YouTube channel and my podcast, I'm very visible uh, and they're all trying to promote to me. But for you in your career, because this isn't about job hunting, it's about career development and career Absolutely. planning and career management so that the ducks are lined up for when you need them or for when they might need yeah. you so that you don't have to put in the effort out of desperation later on, you're able to put yourself in the position of, again, being at the front of the line. Yeah. Networking always beats not working. I love <laughs> that. Keep it going. Keep it going all the time. You'll never have to find a job. Jobs will find you or you'll find that job, but networking will always beat not working. It's uncomfortable, but you get good at it and then it becomes actually fun yeah. and then you help others do it, right? But it will always provide opportunity. I love that phrase. What haven't we covered yet that we really should today, Kevin? 
huh, why? You know, I think what you do is incredible. You know, the, the fact that, you know, you're interviewing people and I always look at that. That's a great way to start to get to know people, right? And build relationships, you know? I know a lot of people that uh, I beta tested the audio stuff on LinkedIn and we would invite people like Richard Branson. Would you like to do an audio event on LinkedIn? He couldn't do his own, so he would show up to it. Would Richard Branson have ever talked to any of us if we didn't have something he wanted? Probably not, <laughs> right? So by having this kind of channel, this, this ability to provide exposure, you know, what you're doing, more people should do, you know? Maybe they're not comfortable with it yet. Maybe they worry, oh, I don't have the equipment. If you've got a laptop or you've got a phone, you can start doing it, right? You can start building this. If you, I'll bet, Jeff, if you went back and looked at your original stuff, right? Oh. One, two, and three, you'd be like, hey, can I just get rid of it, you know? But it starts somewhere, right? And that connectivity is incredible, though. And you are probably attached to every single person that you've interviewed in your process. Yeah. I know. You I did my first video on YouTube in 2008. And at that time, uh, YouTube limited you to a 10 minute video. That gives you an idea how long yeah. ago that was. Oh, yeah. I came in at 958. And if I went to 1003, <laughs> I lost the whole thing. Yeah. And at that time, I didn't monetize it because I didn't know about monetizing it. And I came back two years later and 35,000 people had watched it. And uh, I obviously had an impact. Yeah, yeah. And that's really what we're going for is impact. Yeah. Again, who knows, likes, trusts, respects you. How do you cut the line? Because networking is far better than not working. Yeah, I so it. love that expression. <laughs> And it's not tough to build a brand. You just have to have a conversation with people. That's really all it comes down to. It can be in print. It can be audio. It could be video. Combinations makes no difference. Kevin, this has been a lot of fun. How can people find out more about you and the work that you do? You know, you find me on LinkedIn of most places. I, I'm easy to find as a profile Right. Uh, my my profile URL is uh, LinkedIn.com slash in because we're all in right slash president. So the, the beauty of that, too, is if anybody actually searches for the president of LinkedIn, I'm right. Number two. <laughs> that <laughs> so was brilliant. Pick, pick, pick your digital branding components as well. Right. But that's it. So find me on LinkedIn. Connect with me on LinkedIn. I do always require a personalized invite if you want to connect. If you go to that effort and you sell me, I'm going to take you in. Um, otherwise, you can always follow and start collaborating with me, and then we'll go from there. Beautiful. Kevin, thank you. And folks, we'll be back soon with much more. I'm Jeff Altman, The Big Game Hunter. Hope you enjoyed today's interview. If you didn't, you're watching on YouTube. Share it, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. Do something that lets people know it was worthwhile, okay? Also, visit my website, thebiggamehunter.us. You can schedule time for a free introductory call, a coaching session. Visit the blog. There are thousands of posts there that will help you. You can find out about my courses, books, and guides. It's just a great resource for people. Lastly, and I bet you know where I'm going to talk about, connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash The Big Game Hunter. Have a terrific day. And you know what? Be great. Take care.